I just ask everyone to think about them. Everyone that serves, uh, particularly the, the Idaho National Guard and what they do every day and the risks that they take, uh, but also their families and their neighbors. Families, neighbors, friends, and the state mourning the loss of three Idaho Army National Guard soldiers killed when their Black Hawk helicopter crashed in the mountains east of Boise. In their honor, flags at the Idaho Capitol as you look live throughout the state flying tonight at half staff. Right now, there are a lot of questions surrounding just what led up to last night's crash. First, we don't know who the pilots were. Their names are not being released until after the family notification process is complete. We do know the crash happened southeast of Lucky Peak in an area referred to as Three Point Mountain in the Danskin Mountains. Our Shira Matsuzawa has been staying on top of this story for us all day. She's here now with what we know so far about what happened, the pilots killed, and the investigation that is about to get started. Shira? You know, Mark, you just mentioned it, but as right now, the identities of those pilots have not yet been released, but we're told they were extremely experienced with their experience levels ranging from five to 15 years. You know, the sudden and tragic loss of three of our fellow guardsmen is extremely heartbreaking to every member of the Idaho National Guard family. Heartache and shock being felt across the National Guard, the community, and the loved ones of the three pilots killed Tuesday in a helicopter crash. At approximately 6.50 p.m. last night, February 2nd, three Idaho Army National Guard crewmen, crew members departed Boise in a UH-60 Black Hawk helicopter on a routine training flight in our Nap of the Earth training area. The crew checked in several times with our flight operations during the flight, with the last contact occurring at approximately 7.45. 20 minutes later, the National Guard says the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center in Florida contacted them, saying they were receiving an active emergency locator transmitter signal associated with the aircraft. The National Guard says that's when they launched its emergency response plan and started searching for the aircraft. There was no mayday, uh, no request for an emergency, no declaration of an emergency. At that same time, another aircraft was in the area, and they too tried to look for the pilots but had to land because of weather conditions. We do know from the aircraft that tried to uh, locate them that was out at the same time, uh, they tried three different times through low passes um, to get to that area, but the fog, um, the ceiling layer coming down combined with snow made it untenable for them to be able to get in. Ground crews along with search and rescue crews from Elmore County and personnel from Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue went to the last known location until weather conditions improved and another aircraft launched to search for the pilots. They were found around 1215 Wednesday morning. Sadly, no one survived. And it leaves a tremendous, um, indescribable void uh, in our aviation community. Scott Perkins is the public relations director for the Idaho Mountain Search and Rescue Unit. He was part of the ground crew. Many of us have worked with that, with, with those pilots and, um, and you know, felt a special sense of responsibility to, to provide everything we could in order to, to see if there was a way that we could get them home safely. He couldn't talk about what he saw in terms of the crash site or what happened, but he was able to describe the conditions they faced. It was dark, the temperature had dropped uh, well below freezing and we were getting uh, high levels of wind and blowing snow. And the other area that's particularly challenging out there, you know, the guard is released where, in the general area of where the crash scene was. So um, there's a lot of relief. There's the hills and, and the, the mountain are the mountain sides are pretty steep up there. So um, there's a lot of variation in the amount of accumulated snow up in that area. Perkins adds it felt like there was a heightened level of urgency because these were their partners. He says in many of their search and rescue missions, once they've located those missing, the only way to get those individuals out and to safety is with the help of the National Guard and their helicopters. So Tuesday's search hit extra close to home. Personally, there's obviously a tremendous sense of loss, not just as a, as a member of a search and rescue unit, but also as an American. And, um, and it, was, it was clearly very sad to know that some of the folks that you have directly worked with in service of other people who have found themselves in emergency situations in the backcountry have themselves found themselves in that sort of, sort of emergency. And we, we as a unit wanted to express 
express our condolences not just to uh, to the to the families of the of the pilots, of course, but also to all the other service members of the unit. And multiple agencies are working together Shoot today to secure the crash site and recover the bodies of those killed. The National Guard is not speculating on what caused the crash, but officials do know there was bad weather last night and rough terrain. The Army Aviation Safety Center will lead the investigation and a team is expected in Boise tomorrow afternoon.